David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have something unique for you. Um, a while back, I reviewed a unique space-themed moonwalk pen, which was the first pen from the company called Artcraft. Well, today I have for you their second offering, which continues with the space exploration themes, but takes things a bit farther. All the way out to Mars, with a pen called the Mars Rover. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this 3D printed pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Artcraft for providing this pen for review. Artcraft is based out of Huntsville, Alabama, and is run by a gentleman by the name of John Hubbard. Um, I've previously reviewed, as I mentioned, one of John's pens on my channel, you might recall the Moonwalk pen. Um, Artcraft was originally a fountain pen company founded in the mid-1920s in Birmingham, Alabama, and produced pens there until the mid-1930s. Uh, the company actually then moved to Argentina, where it continued making pens until around 1960. When John learned of the brand uh, and determined that it was the only manufacturer of fountain pens ever located in Alabama, uh, he decided to revive the name for his own company. Uh, the pen arrives in this simple box. I had to cut the uh, ribbon here. And inside we have a reddish brown sleeve from Rickshaw. And inside here we have the pen. Uh, this is the Mars Rover pen. Uh, it's 3D printed and inspired by the Perseverance rover, which is currently cavorting around Mars. Uh, the pen is then hand painted uh, and then coated with a tough Cerakote ceramic finish. Uh, Perseverance is the rover uh, that NASA successfully placed on Mars a couple of years ago. It's been an amazing success and has produced some incredible high quality images of the planet. There's even a little helicopter called Ingenuity that came along for the journey as well. Uh, Perseverance is an important step in what will eventually become the first manned mission to the planet. Uh, NASA is scheduled to have a crew loop around the moon in 2024, and then a mission to land on the moon in 2025, which will be an important building block for the manned mission to Mars, which is expected around the year 2030. Okay, let's take a look at this pen. Um, the highlight of this pen is the exterior treatment, inspired by the rock formations and the tire tracks Perseverance has left on the Red Planet. Uh, the detail is very high quality. I like the details of the tire tracks, and the cracks and fissures look really nice as well. Um, and the pen really doesn't have a 3D printed look or feel to it, uh, which is a good thing. Um, I mentioned ingenuity earlier. On each pen, there's going to be a little hidden secret. Uh, there's going to be a faint shadow of the helicopter located somewhere on the pen as a little Easter egg, as if it was hovering above you. Um, I'm not going to show you what it looks like on this particular pen. I'll let you discover that little surprise for yourself if you should pick one of these pens up. The top of the cap is rounded. Uh, the cap is clipless, which I feel was a wise decision. I think having a clip on here would distract from the overall look and theme of the pen. Um, there's no exterior branding, which again, I think would uh, be a detraction. So again, I think that's a good thing. There is a medium step down from the cap to the barrel, which extends fairly straight until you get to the end where it tapers to a rounded point. The cap twists off in about half a rotation, and underneath we have a stainless steel number no. 6 Franklin Christoph Yovo nib. Franklin Christoph does a fantastic job of making sure their nibs are tuned and working great before leaving their facility. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the section begins with some somewhat narrow threads and then angles up just slightly before a rounded step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this section is 3D printed and has a bit of a different color to it and texture compared to the remainder of the pen. Um, I wish the contrast was a little less apparent. Uh, I do like the shape and feel of this section, but just wish that it looked a little bit more like the rest of the pen. Uh, now, it doesn't need to have like the cracks and the tire tracks that would uh, make for an uncomfortable section, but having the color match a little bit closer would have been nice. 
Uh, it's a bit difficult to make out, but just below the section, John has signed the pen, and that's where it is numbered as well. Now, that line running there was a bit of a curiosity for me. Uh, that line that isn't really present anywhere else in the pen, um, I thought it might have been a hair, uh, but up close it's more of a hair-shaped groove. So maybe a hair got in the exterior treatment of the Cerakote finish and then was removed. Uh, I'm not certain. Like I said, it was a bit of a curiosity for me. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, it is a decent size. The cap does post. It posts deeply and securely and is very light, so it doesn't backweight the pen or throw off the balance at all. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, even though there are no internal metal parts for this pen, there is a small hole here at the back of the barrel, so eye dropping this pen would not be recommended unless you would care to have uh, ink spill all over the place. Um, this pen is offered in two different editions. There is a limited edition version of 47 pens. Why the number 47? Because apparently there have been 47 attempts to date to place orbiters and landers and uh, rovers on or around the planet Mars. Uh, that limited edition number is also assigned by John. That version is $270. Uh, then there's an open non-numbered edition, which goes for $235. Uh, more details in regard to everything else with comes with both models can be found on the company's site. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Thanks go out again to Artcraft for providing this pen for review. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Artcraft Mars Rover. I wanted to give you another closer look at these tire tracks and kind of these rock formations and fissures. I just think that it's executed really well uh, and that it uh, the 3D printing on it is just of high quality. But in regard to some size comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with a Leonardo Mosaico. Uh, that's in the Mango model. Uh, then here it is with a Diplomat Arrow. Uh, and then we have it with another somewhat space-themed pen, which is the uh, Cross Peerless 125, and that is the Darth Vader version. In regard to a few other pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. Here it is with a Pilot 1911 Large. And then finally, here it is with a Wancher Dream Pen, and this one is in the uh, Arushi. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Leonardo and the 146 from Moblon, and then here it is with the 1911 Large. Here we go with the writing sample for the art craft. And this is the Mars Rover. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using is one that uh, comes with some certain versions of this pen, which is appropriately enough Colorverse Martian. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a nice orangish red. It's almost more orange than red. Um, I almost uh, kind of compared it more to some of the oranges I have. It looks very similar to uh, uh, Noodler's Apache Sunset, but a little bit more on the red side. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with Orochizuku Yuyaki. And this is what the bottle looks like. This is Colorverse's mini bottle. Uh, let me get it out of here. It is the cutest little bottle you have ever seen. It is a very small bottle, uh, and it even comes with a little eyedropper because uh, you can't get any nib in here. You could maybe get a converter in here, or you could uh, use a syringe or something like that to fill it up, but yeah, you're not getting a nib inside here. But it's a very nice uh, color that matches well to this pen. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample.
Um, as I mentioned before, Franklin Kristoff does an incredible job of tuning their nibs, and they make sure that they're perfect before they uh, uh, leave their facility. And every single one uh, has hands laid on it, and so they do a very good job with their nibs. I'd say the ink flow on here is on the low side of medium. And in regard to reverse writing, you can see that it, that's not necessarily um, what this nib works well with. But in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up fine. So there we have the Artcraft Mars Rover pen. Um, I think it's interesting to see what can be done with 3D printing and the quality um, of what can be produced and how it doesn't look anything like some of the 3D printing of even just a couple of years ago. So it's something well worth taking a closer look at. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.